so I, you know, was just explaining, I'm actually kind of on vacation. I'm in uh, Moncton, New Brunswick right now. Went on a bit of a vacation out to the East Coast. So I didn't want to give up the opportunity to be able to do the webinar with you and talk about the Harvest Moon and some of the teachings and stories that are related to that. Um, maybe I can just throw it over to you and let you give it a start and go from there. Okay, I'm glad that you're you're out in the east there of uh, the the beginning of our great migration of the Anishinaabek people that went across the land. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to uh, talk first about that before we talk about um, the moon teachings. But I'll introduce myself. Um, I'm white spotted horse. I'm from the uh, lynx clan, which I seen the clans, uh, the lynx this morning, by the way. So that was good to see uh, my clan representative. I'm from Scallon and First Nations of Treaty Two Territory, Anishinaabe Soto. Um, my common name is Alan Sutherland, and I currently work for Treaty Two First Nations of Treaty Two Territory. Um, Earth Lodge as a lodge keeper. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. Welcome. I'm glad to be here. So um, you you wanted to talk, you initially contacted me, you wanted to talk about um, the harvest moon. That's, yes. And you know, that's my, I, is that the moon tonight? There's a full moon tonight. Yes. And I believe it's the harvest moon. Am I right or wrong? I'm not hundred percent sure. No, it's just that it's um, around the world. Everybody has a name for all these moon cycles. Now, even among the Turtle Island, there's so much way of describing it. So there's also the farmer's alamac, which everybody is uh, makes reference to is the hunter's moon. Right. Okay. Now, to the Anishinaabe, this is definitely the harvest moon is because we're, 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 we're getting ready for the, for the long winter. So as soon as we, 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 we hunt and we harvest, we get everything in place, then we, in this time period, we, we celebrate. We, we, we have access, like access, so we celebrate. And that's where Originally, where um, we have our ceremonies, like Chibai ceremonies, to honor our ancestors. So this is a time when you invite everybody to come in and, and have that last great celebration before you get into the winter months. So this is this is one of those special times uh, for a lot of people like myself. Um, I always found that um, I re would reflect from the past year. And remembering those that I, I associate myself with, I interact with, but also to have that connection with our ancestors. So that's when we do our Thanksgiving, we do our ceremonies and, and gratefulness. And we honor the dead, you know, by placing uh, spirit plates and meals to those that, um, that enjoy these feasts. So that in the, in the spiritual world, they too will feast along with us. So this is a very special time because the next moon cycle will be getting colder. Uh -huh. And then we call that freezing moon. But this is what I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you by a PowerPoint uh, for me just to um, stay on track what I want to share with you. Okay. So I'm just going to mute. Okay. So I'm just going to attempt this now on share screen. And I'm going to look for uh, moon teachings. Okay. I see it in, re I just got on too, so I wasn't able to re um, save everything, but that's all right. It's in the heart and I'll speak from there. So I'm just gonna put it on, see that? Just nod yes if we did, good. So this is the 13 Grandmother Moon teachings. Like I said, I have my title there in front, uh, and this is it. Mr. Tem is my spirit name and there is such a strong connection, the lure of our spirit to the moon. And I wanted to start from there. Why is that? Why? There's a full moon tonight. 
this morning, just before that full moon is going to show itself tonight, I did a pipe ceremony. Because one of the ways we, we, we um, work with that moon in terms of blessings is that uh, we pray. So you can pray by offering a tobacco, a sama, offer it a, in a fire or put it into the wind or place it on the ground. But as soon as you, you, you touch that uh, medicine, your essence of your being oh, goes along with it and your answers are sent out. Your, your prayer is sent out, that is. So for me this morning, when I raise my pipe, it's gaining. It's gaining towards the night. So as you, as you ask for things, blessings, you're, this is a time to, its power is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. So that's why I did it this morning. Now it's at the highest peak. I think it's over 11 o'clock here in central Manitoba. At its highest peak is when it's, it's all balanced out. So we work with the moon cycles in terms of when's the best time to, to do things. So if you're on, if it's if it's starting to go away again, then you can raise and pray to the moon in different cycles. So if it's going away, to that cycle of going away, then you you do prayers by saying, "Take this away from me. I don't need this right now. Thank you for the lesson, but it's, um, now you can take it back. You can you can send things off that you no longer need anymore." So if you had problems and troubled minds, you know, say, good, uh, that's part of the lessons of life, but now you can take it back. So when you get to the, to the new moon, again, it's a very, a very um, pivotal time. And, uh, and they say that this is a time when men should really lift up their pipes because the full moon is really a, a, a woman's teaching but the men are part of that moon. That, that moon. So on a, on a new moon, like before we get into the cycle coming back, that's the best time for the men to say, come, it's our turn. Let's do a ceremony. So that brings balance with the women and men. So as, I, as, as it gains towards the full moon again in that cycle, then once again, you're asking for things that you want in your life. I always like to start off by, um, I always like quotes from past leadership or ancestors. But this is a message to not only for ourselves, from our ancestors, but for the people of the world. But it emphasizes what, what, what this earth journey is about. We all walk this good earth road as creatures of the one creator. The rising and falling of the sun each day. The seasons. The gifts of food, shelter, love, and friendship are there for each of us in the one circle. If you cannot find a way to be grateful in your heart, the fault, the fault lies within you. To come say, a leader of all nations, around 1812. I, I like, I, 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 my view to come say is one of the ones I looked historically to because they, uh, he was able to unite at one time all the nations. To a common problem, which is the advancement of uh, Monias or people coming into their lands. But anyway, he was trying to convey the power of the circle. Everything around us is, is the power of the circle. So our life on earth is a walk on that circle, our mother earth. But to, the, to know the stories that are around us, like the moon itself is a circle. The sun is a circle. Um, the animal world have circles in their shelters. We build our, and then back in the day, our shelters was formed in a circle. So, so we are living in one circle, which is the earth. Now, this is a long story, but I'll quickly get into it as a reminder um, because it relates to the moon. Nuka Miss is the daughter of the moon who fell down to the earth which is why the meaning of this name is sometimes listed as the daughter of the moon. Eventually, she bears a daughter named Menona, who allows herself to be seduced by, the, by 
Maduji Jeevis, the spirit of the west wind, despite her mother's warnings. Now, the west wind abandoned her, and Winona would die giving birth to one of her babies. Nupumis raised and educated one of her grandsons, Wenebujo. And he is powerful, and his power comes from the west wind, which is an earthly power. Because that is who his dad is. And we know he gets his power from the stars because that is where Nukamis comes from. The moon, as she fell in, in, into the waters of the earth. His grandmother came from the moon. Tibiki Gisis is the grandpa was the bear. Now that's that's the, that's my Nona's father, is the bear, Makwa. So when Abuju had his place and his strength, uh, both, both from the earth and both from, from the heavens, and, and, and got tremendous medicines and knowledge of those medicines. And that's what Mishkiki is, is the strength of the earth. So we're getting, as, as a Anishinaabek people, strength from above and below. And that accumulates in our heart. Because all these powers are combined in him. He's, he made his heart connected to both upper and lower world. He made him a very strong person, a strong heart. Anishinaabe means that, original human being. Anishinaabek means the original peoples. So while growing up and being raised by Nukamis, he had many adventures and learning and experiences and Shortly after his vision quest, he wanted to go on a long journey. He wanted to explore the world on his own. As he was leaving the lodge, his grandmother's parting words to him was, I have called you Nushis, Nushis, but now I will call you Nishnabe. On his journey, the creator and the great spirit, Yitim Manatu, have instructed him to go out on his journey and name everything. So the Anishinaabek names are all over the place. Uh, all locations, the rivers, the lakes, the animals, the, everything was named. And so that is when he re actually received the name. He earned his name. That is why his name is Wenebuj. So to honor that one, we greet each other. If you know this story and you go into ceremonies, then you're essentially saying buju to another human being. If they respond back by saying buju, then, then you can say to each other, we know the stories, we know who we are. But if they say anin, or tanse, buju, bonjour, or hello, then maybe they don't know the story. But we greet each other by recognizing we're all human beings. Now, Along, along his journey, he received his friends. He was adopted into the wolf pack. And one of them became one of his friends. He had learned everything from the wolf. His friend, Mahaigan, they went and journeyed together while he gets to name everything. So that is why the Anishinaabek people have a close relationship with the wolf. They, they, they had the wolf pack have taught him how to be a great hunter, how to collaborate and work together as a group of people to survive out there in the harshest elements. So he learned quite a bit from his brother, the wolf. And they travel the earth together, naming everything and seeing everything. So when they completed that task, the great spirit, like I said, gave him his name, Wenebuju. Now the Great Spirit said, from this day on, you are to separate, be separate from your past. Like all friends do, eventually we all go on our different path. But we always remain friends. Now, you must go on your separate ways. However, what shall happen to one of you will happen to the other because you're brothers. You both are closely connected to Mother Earth. Manitou Akwe. Or Nima Maaki, and your grandmother Nukamis, that came from the moon. 
they be Canadian. So my Agan, the wolf, and my name Boju, the original human being, set off on their earthly journey. But they're closely connected to that moon. Now, from the original human being became many, many nations, many, many languages, many, many, even their own worldviews and their own understandings and how this relationship began. They all might, will have similar origin stories. Some will be very different from each other. But the one thing that I have learned and I was taught this, they were all true. They're all origin stories are true. But what relates to this is that that's called diversity. Gichi Manitou created that diversity in nature. He created the universe and galaxies, but when he created the earth, it was full of diversity, full of different shapes, different colors, different sizes. There are many, many different trees. There are many different animals. So why not create many different people? so that they have their own relationship or their own journey Manitou with the great spirit. And when you gather as a people, you become a family, you become a community, you become nations, and you have your own languages, your own understanding. But throughout Turtle Island, we have our own places. We have our own territory. And we have our stories. So that's why we need to go back and learn what is common to all of us. We all share a Turtle Island story. We all share that, that we have this great association to all the things surrounding us and what surrounds us is spirit. Without the grandfather, there's no life. I'm going to share you the story that was taught me a long, long time ago. I grew up with this understanding. Without the grandmother, there's no life. That's how you get people to agree, common ground. Do we need grandmother for life? A lot of people say yes. Some won't say anything at, at first because they're not sure what the question is supposed to be about. Without your father, there's no life. Then they start getting it. Yes, you're right. We need our father to have life. Without the mother, there's no life. Now everybody agrees. Yes, we all need our mother coming to this world. You know, so everybody agrees. Without the brother, there's no life. Then we go back to silence. Do we need a brother for life? Some will say, oh, of course. Others will say, I know, I don't need my brother. Others will say, what about a sister? Oh, yes, of course. Others will say, not really. So we can talk more about this, but then the answer comes. What I'm referring to is your grandfather is the son. Now, does a son give you life? Yes, Jesus gives us life, that one. Your grandmother gives you life. And then you learn that your grandmother is that moon. Tibiki Jesus, Tibiki Jesus. That's the moon. And then I asked, give me examples of what life do they provide you? The sun obviously is that energy. Everything in life, we need that energy for the food, for us to, to be part of this life. You know, when um, Gichi Manitou was saying, I'm going to create life, where would be the best place? Well, there was already a place in, it was called, we call today Nima Ma'aki, Mother Earth. Now, if it was too far away from the earth, it will be too cold. If it was just too close to the earth, it will burn up. It's just perfect for where it is. And the same thing with the moon. Perfect. In fact, scientists cannot, uh, cannot find a, why this is the way it is. That round size of the moon occasionally will block a, a solar eclipse. Of the, of the sun so perfectly, perfect. And, and if it was any, and if any change is closer to the sun or it was closer to the earth, then that, that the miracle of creation will never be seen or felt. So that was, that's, that's 
again, creation. Now, both sun and moon gives us not only life because the waters are cleansed by the mother, uh, grandmother moon, ebb and flow of tides. The sun gives us that, that heat, that warmth. Together, though, they give us time. This is how we measure time and this and the life that we go in through the red road life. There's time, there's cycles, cycles of time. So you have both day and night. So at night, it's time to put uh, the night uh, blanket on and go to sleep. And when the sun comes out, you take off the blanket of night and you meet the day. So that's night and day. And that goes the same thing with the moon. The moon tells us months. Every month, there are things that we need to do in those days, new seasons. And then there are moon cycles. So this was, um, this is, was very important for us to organize ourselves. What do we need to do in a certain month? But to go on to the story, the Father is the sky that gives you life. You breathe the air that you get. You get the protection, the ozone layer of our Father. We also see the storms and the beauty of our Father. Of course, everything we receive is from our mother, Nimama. She gives us everything. And everything else is our relations, our brothers, our brother, tree, sister, so forth, the trees, the plants, they're all our relations. So what we call this is our family, our creation family. So we're not above it, we're not below it, we're part of it. So that's how we can describe, um, when we describe our worldview, it's almost like a, a web of life. It touches everything. We're connected by spirit to everything. Whatever you do on one part of the, the web affects us all. Meanwhile, other points of views or worldviews is it's more of a hierarchy where the human being is on top and everything else is on the bottom and then you make decisions over those things. But this teaching is what we call spirit. Everything there is that I'm talking about all of life, all of creation is spirit. So I usually ask people to get things going in terms of, do you have a spirit? And what does it look like? It's just to, be, to, to reflect oneself, it says, you are more than a physical body, that you are all these things. And, and it's hard to describe spirit because it's like trying to describe love. You know, you, you have to do your best you can to describe love because you feel it so intensely sometimes. I think that's in our language. It, it means more like being stingy to that person. I don't want to share that person with anybody else. That's how intense love is. So just because you can't see it, it is real. Just like the air we breathe, you don't see it, but it's real. But everything is spirit. And who taught me all this? And I want to honor him by announcing his name. My mentor, my friend, is Jules Lavalley, went to the spiritual world just recently. And because of COVID, we're unable to gather as a people to honor them. But this is one of his teachings. To remind us who we are. But the teachings that you're, you're, you asked me about is... Uh, it's difficult to answer because um, it's not only there are teachings like this around the world. Even the far farmer, Alamac, has his own way of describing each different moon, even though they have picked up uh, the descriptions of uh, the original peoples. But our, among our own people all over Turtle Island will have it a little bit different. Why? Because this is a large part of the world. And we don't live in the same environment. Some environments are, are more uh, uh, boreal forests. Others will be the plains. Others will be in the Rockies. So it depends on your activity for those any given months. I'll give you an example. 
we we um, historically some of them might be influenced with newcomers and they bring in their own um, celebrations but it, we kind of find common ground so we, we kind of make some things that are more influenced in that way now Manitougis is is a big spirit moon now others will call that uh, the wolf the wolf moon so you see, because the wolf at more, more, more ancient times, the reason why we call the wolf moon is because that is, that is the height of um, the cold. And you hear the wolves uh, howling at the moon. And that's why it was named as such. A lot of people still call it a wolf moon. Now what you see here is a, a pattern that's on the back of a, of a turtle. And it just fits so well because when we teach about the moon teaching is 13 moons. And you can teach it. And also the 28 days of a moon cycle. And it's, it's 13. In a way, um, when um, modern science look at this, they, they, um, they can't believe how accurate is this, these cycles. But for us, it has purpose. It tells us what we have to do at any given time. Each month and within that month, what we need to do. It measures time. Back in the day, you know, people would say, how many moons ago was that? In terms of one moon cycle, how many moons ago was that? So you measure by uh, sometimes by generations by moons. So I, I, I know I didn't complete this 100%, but I'll do the best I can. Uh, computer problems, wasn't loading quick enough, and I had to get on to do this presentation. But let us begin right here. Now, Manitouki says the spirit moon is the first moon of creation of the spirit moon. And what I'm sharing with you is for this region, uh, the Anishinaabek people for the West. Oh, yeah. Center of Turtle Island, by the way. So I do the best I can to find the most common way of describing. It. But if you went up north, it might be different. If you go east, it'll be different. You go south, it'll be different, and so forth. Now, the first moon of creation is spirit moon. And that just co co that goes exactly almost like, the, like uh, the calendars that we're used to. Starts January 1st, you make your promises, New Year's resolutions, and within the week, you break them. Anyway, this is the moon that manifests through the northern lights. It's a time to honor the silence and realize our places within all great mysteries, um, the great creators, uh, creatures. This is a time of reflection at the coldest months. And a lot of times, where we're, we're in our wigwams, we're in our close, uh, lo uh, long, long homes. So we, we, we do a lot of ceremony, a lot of reflection. Also the time of winter, this is a time you tell the stories. You tell all the stories. And usually the, they say that the stories to be, you know, is to bump her down, you know, stay warm, survive. Now the stories begin. The next one is the, the bear moon. Jesus. Now the second moon of creation is the bare moon when we honor the vision uh, uh, quest that began in the fall. This is a time when the bear goes and, and you know, feeds itself up, fattens itself up, and now goes into hibernation. Almost like we, we do. We, we, we do those things. During this time, we discover how to see beyond reality and communicate through energy rather than sound. And this moon also gives us special teachings about the birth of air clubs. It's about preparing for the next cycle of life and the bear club and the bear cubs are coming. So it begins, the cycle begins again. Now the next one is sugar moon is in March. This is the third moon of creation. As maple sap begins to run, we learn of one of the main medicines is given to the Anishinaabe 
which balances our blood and heals us. The moon teaches us that time of year when the sap is running for, for maple sugar to be harvested. This is the celebration that started to begin. It's starting to warm up, it's starting to get warm again. So it start, we start um, preparing for that uh, summer cycle. We, we prepare um, our canoes and, and this is a time when uh, you, you, you mend your moccasins because it's melting, freezing, melting, freezing. So it kind of cuts into it. So you have to prepare them. But the important thing here is to now start the cycle of harvesting. And this is where it begins. Sucker moon uh, is in April. This is the fourth moon. When the sucker goes to the spiritual world in order to receive cleansing techniques for this world. And when it returns to this realm, it purifies. That's why they say that it, uh, medicine. It purifies the path for the spirits and cleanse all of the water being. So that everything is starting to flow again, all the rush, everything's melting. This is a time of new life and everybody's active, everybody's happy. So this is during this time we can learn to become healed healers. So we, we get ourselves ready in terms of what we need to do to replenish our bundles as healers. So another teaching is that the uh, sucker gives up his life for the Ojibwe in the month of February. The previous month, January is the hardest time of year to get food because of scarceness of game. But in February, it's easier to net these fish. It is believed that the sucker is giving his life to the Anishinaabe to become strong again. The flower moon, May, is uh, where all the plants display their spirit sides of the world to see. So they're starting to grow. It's time, it's time to plant. It is time to get ready to, to plant here for your garden, it's, it's to prepare for that. So they're in the flower world, they're showing themselves, they're, they're receiving the energy of life and they're growing just like us. As it gets warmer and warmer, we feel very good and we receive the energy. This life-giving energy is one of the most powerful healing medicines of Mother Earth. During the moon, we are encouraged to explore our spiritual essence, but you know, that's uh, during those, those dark um, those, um, and cold winter months, we lack vitamin D. Uh, we go steer crazy, they say. Oh, you've been, we've all been through the COVID period, so you may understand that. <laughs> but when, the, when you're out in the sun, you're receiving all that beautiful healing, that energy, that vitamin D. Strawberry moon in June is the sixth moon of creation. The medicine of the strawberry is uh, reconciliation or to find balance, is to, to, to get all the sweetness in us. They'll find, uh, uh, starting to find them uh, harvesting medicines. It is during this moon cycle that communities usually hold their annual feast, welcoming everyone home, regardless of their difference over the past year, letting go of judgment, self-righteousness. Gathering does that. People forget when they celebrate and they feast. He says, that, Manu, that was last year. So this is a time to, to get ready. This is time to plan for ceremonies, sun dance, you know, all nation dancing. It's time to gather. The strawberry is the first berry to ripen. is thought to be a good medicine for the heart. That is why we say um, Anishinaabek people, Jibwe people are, are people of the strawberry because that one looks like our heart. And when you get into July, July is the seven moon of creation is the raspberry moon, but some will call it the half, the halfway summer moon. Some will call it, this is a time of that blue moon. Every once in a while, you'll see uh, in, a, in, in a modern calendar, two moon cycles, two full moons in one month. But that shifts, it can shift from um, June, July, and August. So this is where they say once in a blue moon, but it comes in different names. So others will call it the halfway moon, because now you can say, oh, uh oh, we gotta get ready now. You know we. Can't celebrate all the time. You gotta get to work. So 
this is a time of uh, when great changes begin. By learning gentleness and kindness, we may pass through the thorns of the brush, the harvest of fruit. We gain knowledge that will help us raising our family. So it is time to check on our garden. So it is time to get ready for the next, the next thing. Now the eighth moon of creation is the blackberry moon. And when we honor the blackberry, which produces the abundance of fruit once every three years, it is one of the first plants to put on Mother Earth. Its purpose is to protect the sacred circle of life by allowing us to recognize and understand the teachings that come from the spiritual world. The eighth moon can fall in either July, August, depending on the year. So again, it's, it's, it depends on which moons you're seeing in one month in a calendar year. Now, the, the, in August is, uh, is the, the moon, is the corn moon. For those that are, are closely associated with that corn harvesting, during which time we learn about the cycle of life. Each cob of corn has 13 rows of multicolored seeds, which represents all the spirits waiting to begin their earthly walk. Those will be the future generation at home. We must prepare. So it's, uh, there are many teachings around this uh, corn, corn activity. And this is where I, I, I'll, I'll leave it. I got, I got that one other document that I didn't transfer to you. So I'm gonna go to this one. There we go. And I'm just gonna open the screen again and go to this one. Chimiigwech, that was really um, amazing, quite informative. Oh, there's the rest well, of you're not done I'll, yet. I'll, I'll finish it. Oh, perfect. I'm glad. <laughs> we're, not, about, we're not talking about this season. This, yes, perfect. Okay. And then September was is, is this the falling leaves moon. But in, in there in there is also um, for a lot of us is um, rice, getting rice. So there are some that practice that too. So September is the tenth creation of falling leaves moon, a time when Mother Earth is honored with the grandest of color. Of all creation makes their offerings to her, uh, we become aware of the miracles of creation before us, and our spiritual energies are once again awakened. I too am awakened in the fall. I just, I just my favorite time of year, actually. A lot of people are so happy because, oh, now I can go and hunt and I can go and hang out with the guys. And the women says, oh, the meat's coming. We're all going to have a feast. Everybody's happy. <laughs> so the, the next one is the freezing moon. But again, it, like what we talked about earlier, it can be called the, the hunter's moon. But this is, the, this is the 11 moon of creation, time when the star nation, and I love seeing the moon in the sky. It's so beautiful. And you see the star nations. You see one that's very close right now. I don't know which one that is. There's a, there's a Jupiter, but it has a it has Nishinaabek names, and we have people that have that kind of knowledge. Uh, I want to learn more about it myself. But this is a time in November uh, of um, the 12th moon in November. It's called the Little Spirit Moon. is a, a, a time of healing by receiving both visions of spirits and good health. We may walk the red road with the purest intentions. We can share the most positive energy with our families, friends. And this is a time now we, we get closer together with our own family. We get ready to, and, and, and historically, we break up from larger community with, other, with a lot of our larger groupings and we, we become closer to kin, to kin. And we spread out so that we have our place in the winter, do our, our own hunting our own place to do those activities like being a, a net fi a, a fisherman or, or trapping and so forth. So we spread ourselves out, but we're all, we're all within our little families. And then of course, it's December, the big spirit moon. Now this is the moon of uh, the purpose to purify us and to heal all creation, the process which takes Three months and a long spiritual journey. This is a time of reflection. This time of ceremonies and storytelling. During this time, we receive instructions of the healing powers of the universe, universe and transform into our own vision and truth. So this, uh, I guess, to this day, they call it meditation. 
but in those time periods, you, you, you're, you're basically, uh, the journey is going inside and then connecting to the spirit of the universe. So those are very important ceremonies around those times. But they, they get modernized because now you have uh, Christmas. <laughs> then you have New Year's Eve. But it's still reflective of that those are the time to go visit your friends and neighbors and community members. And I remember, you know, uh, to honor those events, you, sh you shoot in the air with your shotgun. Everybody was doing it back home in Scowan. I don't know if they still do that because I, I moved away um, over 20 years ago. But anyway, I, I gave you the quick uh, 13 segments of each spot on a, on a back of a shell of a turtle. But once again, I just want to emphasize that it'll probably be taught differently where you are right now on the East Coast <laughs> than those that are in the Great Lakes, those that are in, uh, just on Ontario, then those that are here in central uh, Manitoba, then those that are in Plains or up so in a way, um, there you have it. Did you have any questions for me? Did I, I honor your virtual tobacco? Uh, yes, I. <laughs> for me personally, it was incredible. Um, a lot of it was very reflective with my grandparents. So uh, I, I was born and raised in Sandy Bay, and then I was born and in which is Thunderbird woman who flies high. Um, from Treaty One area in Sandy Bay, Manitoba, and my grandparents. Um, this time of year was always so happy, you know, because yeah, Grandpa, my uncles, they'd all be out getting ready, and I, from a very young age, learned how to tend to the, the kills and the cleaning and the feasting, and so it was for me incredible because I'm from the same area, and it's true. I know we have people from all over that are joining, and it's different for everybody. And I'm just wondering, is there anybody out there that has any questions or any comments that you'd like to share or ask of Alan? I just wanted to say that um, I'm, I live in Winnipeg. I'm now back home in Treaty 2 territory. So I'm, I'm starting to pick up the language again. But, but after 23 years, it was, uh, it's, it's slow in coming, but it's coming. I kind of uh, I kind of uh, butchered some of the some of the words, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's the fun of it, though, because we can uh, we can make fun of each other and laugh at each other. But the most important point, I think, is you're learning the language. You're coming back to it. Oh, some. But, um, but I'll tell you though, I always had the teaching, that and is... this was gifted to me just uh, two weeks ago, actually. But that's no, there's no coincidence. Uh, things are meant to be. So, this, when, so when you invited me to talk about this, this is what came to me. That is gorgeous. Did you do this, make this? No, it was gifted. It was gifted. So you see the, the teachings there in Nukkumis. On the drum is the, is the bear. You see the wolf. Yes. And you I are the Nishnavik. Yeah, you're, you're in this picture by looking at it, and there's the moon. Oh my goodness, that is so beautiful and very powerful. I'm thank you. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so I just said, hey, I gotta show this on the screen. Onishin, very. Um, there's a question for June Moon. What if you are not ready to let go? Well. Um, to let go is essentially a surrender. So what I'll say, what are you holding on to? Because uh, a lot of times we do our sun dance, we, we surrender. We, we give ourselves to spirit and it's hard to hang on to something because you'll suffer. So usually as a healer, I would say, what I know sometimes in our past, we, 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 we try to survive. But how does it meet your purpose today in terms of that was then and this is now? Now, would you want would you want to now advance yourself? Would you want to now let go of what's holding you back? So it's a process. 
so that's why we have these kind of ceremonies is to say it's choice it's free will but the creator did not make us to suffer the suffering only happens because it's the human aspect of ourselves, the human program. But our spirit is infinite. It, it's, it's aware, it knows. So we have to tap into that to, to heal our mind, to heal our emotions, to let go, surrender. So I hope I, I answered that question. Uh, I hope, uh, you know, Rochelle, I see that was your question. If you need further, let me know. I have a question from Brooke as well, asking, can you share a practice or intention you might recommend for this freezing moon? Freezing moon. You know, it, you just get busy to prepare for the winter. That's what this is it. This is what it is. It's, she starts saying, how can I uh, make my, my home warm and comfortable for the coming year? So when, it, when, when, the, when, the, when, the, when the water is frozen, it's very cold because of that. <laughs> so you're supposed to do all this work before it, and now you can sit back and have your cocoa and your, or tea, coffee, whatever is your favorite beverage. If you're lucky to have a fireplace, and you, know, you just lay back and says, you know, now I can relax. It's a, oh, I like that. Uh, I tend to hibernate in the winter. I don't like the cold. I was born in the flower month, so <laughs> I like to stay within that season. But I do love the fall. Like I said, I've, I'm, you know, traveling the East Coast, got to see the amazing, beautiful sights of the changes of the leaves. I love fall. You know, everything is going to sleep. Majini Pamagat is what Grandpa used to always say. You know, this is when you... You take the time to cherish it, honor it, respect it, but also let go. You know, I'm, and that's something I think we have to learn to live with too. And this is a good time to do so because you're you're now you now have to look within. You're gonna have to say, okay, what do I want to let go? So you meditate, you reflect, you say, this is the way it's gonna be from the coming year. I'm gonna be free. So you, you you know do what you can to to look at oneself and to let things go and to meet the uh, the new opportunities of the future. So yeah, I think the seasons give us those things. Mm -hmm. um, I have, that was I I thoroughly enjoyed the teachings. It was a nice reminder. It was a nice reconnection. Give me which Um Donna is asking tonight as i do every year on her birthday i put out a plate for my sister who has gone to the spirit world can i do something to honor grandmother moon at the same time you you can make uh, tobacco ties and 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 say uh, give me blessings or or ask for whatever you want because it's such a powerful moment that full moon and that's that, that, that feminine, um, powerful woman energy. So that's that kindness, that love. So like asking your grandma, your nuka, miss, grandma, help me out here. Look after me. Oh, put it in a prayer. Put it out there. And I'll, and I'll answer. Um. Donna says, me which I will do that. And Brooke said, thank you as well for her question earlier. Anybody else have anything? We have about nine more minutes. I think we are booked for about an hour on this webinar, um, which went really too fast. That's an hour is not enough time. There's so much you have a amazing wealth of uh, knowledge to be shared and I greatly appreciate it. If there's anybody, how, is there a way to reach you if somebody want to reach out and um, ask any further questions later on or another time? Well, um, before I, I'll give that kind of information, I'll let, I'll share something that, that, um, that's something oh, that I have one more question. Yep, Can I just, ahead. I'm sorry. I just, as you're popping up, I didn't mean to cut you <laughs> off. <laughs> 
I just want to make sure I get everybody's questions. Uh, Lori is asking, what type of ceremony would I do in June for releasing? I lost my daughter to murder. She was 18 in June of 2011 and have been actively working on my healing journey, but I'm having trouble releasing. Thank you. I'm so sorry, Lori. Yeah. Um, see, if, for those that go to these powerful ceremonies that starts in June, is the sun dance. Now you can you can get offered tobacco and make a pledge to be part part of it. So one way you can be part of it is being dancing. Dance for healing. Dance for what you're praying for. Sing and dance and, and, and just let yourself whatever you need to release that emotional grieving that you're going through to release. Now you can also volunteer like uh, is to support, but you will benefit as well from the heat. There's all kinds of healings going on. Now, if you want to go when they have, um, when they're actually doing healing on the third day, um, sometimes it depends on the Sundance, but it could be on a Sunday, but a third day for sure is to go to a Sundance and it'll take you to the sacred tree. And they use that tree. And you, you don't even have to have a sun dance to do this. You go to any tree and it'll absorb all your emotional turmoil. And you cry. You pour out your heart. You voice it. You let it out. And then you ground yourself. Then you, then you find yourself. You can now walk again. Feel again. But I'll tell you about grieving though. There's no one set way of doing anything like this. It's everybody is on their own journey when it comes to these things. But I did help this one person by saying, you, you didn't lose that person. That person's still with you. So just pay attention to the signs. If they love a certain music, play that music. If, you, if it has a good beat, dance to that music. Sing that, to that music. Sing to that music. But pay attention to the signs because they're going, they're always want to let you know that they're there. And just to, to give you comfort by saying, I'm, I didn't leave you. I'm part of you. Oh, um, I hope that helps, Lori. Just thank you so much. Okay. Uh, so back, I guess, if uh, anybody wants to reach you, how are oh, yeah. you, sir? Oh, this question. <laughs> Okay. Quick, quick. Uh, it's just a story because a, a month ago, uh -huh. I left up my pipe to the full moon, saying, "Find me a place. I need a. I need a. I need property. I need an acreage. I need to be back to ceremony. Get out of the city. I need to do the healing lodge." And then a few. The the next day, I put a bid in and I won. Yay! Excellent. This, this morning, I went and got the keys, went to check out the place, and the links was there, my, my, do, my do them. So they, they, they know my purpose. They know what I need to do. So I am grateful for the power of nature, the power of the moon. And anybody can, can it's, it's ours. It's ours. It's never, it never left us. It's always been ours. Mm -hmm. so just trust in that. No, you can reach me by um, Alan Sutherland. Um, you know, the easiest way to reach me is whitespottedhorse.com. Okay. Because my email's there. Okay. And I will be I guess, sure. I think we can share that also on our on our page. It's um, free. It's free. Just go ahead and, and you got my email. If you put it there, that'll be fine too. It's netscape.net, Alan Sutherland, netscape.net. But okay. it's easier to say, go to the website. It's an old one, though, but you get the information. It's uh, whitespottedhorse.com. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. We're pretty much wrapped up our hour. I can see there's a lot of, uh, I don't know if you can see the chats on the side. No? Oh, once in a while, it, it pops up like a balloon. Okay. Like a bubble. <laughs> but I, I see the thank you, Alan. So yes, you're excellent. There's, it's been greatly... Um, it's greatly received some very nice comments i'll definitely make sure we share them with you and um once i get back to manitoba maybe we can touch base and 
plan for something down the future for another teaching. I said, you're an amazing wealth of information. And I love uh, sharing. Thank you. Yeah, we'll definitely connect. Definitely. Well, get you miigwech. Minoyan. Miigwech. You hope min minawiba.